Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Create Career Conversations with Create CA. I'm Brittany, and I am right now um, pinning to my profile. This time I'm just doing it right away because I always... There we go. Um, so first, before we start, I want to invite you after this chat to go to the link that I just pinned, uh, createca.org to sign the pledge, um, to, uh, get arts education in the schools as is actually mandated. Um, but yeah, sign the pledge, take real action, and we can get more arts education in California schools, which is obviously really important. Um, so anyways, I'm so excited, uh, today because I am talking to Greg Crayola Simpkins, who I am a friend of and also a big fan of for a really long time. Um, he's an incredible artist. He's uh, been an illustrator for clothing brands and for bands. He's worked for video game companies. He's um, he's done art for video games like Tony Hawk. Uh, uh, gosh, I don't, I don't know video games very well, but for the, one of the Tony Hawk video games and Spider-Man. Um, and he's also a fine artist. He's a street artist. He's worked, he's worked with everybody. Um, anyways, he's amazing. And I, I could just keep going on about his credits, but rather than doing that, why don't we, uh, why don't we chat with him? So let me just bring him into the chat. As my puppy comes up behind us. I think it's okay. Good, good, good. It's starting to connect. This is Emmy. I think it's working. Crayola. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I haven't seen really you in a while. I know it's been some time. <laughs> I'm like looking at your face and I'm realizing it's been a long time. Yeah. How's James? He's great. He's back in the studio right back there. He's probably actually watching this. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> cool. Very cool. Well, this is awesome that you're doing this. Thank you. Yeah, I am a, a friend of mine, uh, Matt Hartman, has been working with Create CA, and he knows how passionate I am about arts and schools. And I, my family is teachers. My Both my parents and my brother are all teachers. Gotcha. And um, yeah, so he uh, asked, I was like, yes, I want to do whatever I can for, for Create CA. So thank you for, for chatting with us. I was so excited when I found out you said yes. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. So you were born in Torrance, California. So yes. you're a local California boy. Yes. Um, and you've said that you've always had an overactive imagination and you started drawing at three, right? Yep. Yeah, um, around then, I'm pretty sure, I don't remember the exact time, but my mom always says, oh, you were three and couldn't put down your crayon. So I'm gonna listen to her on that one. That's amazing. I, I wasn't doing anything at three. I was like <laughs> splashing in puddles and I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, being scared that my brother was born because I want, you know, I was an only child and I was like, what is this new human being? Because I was three when my brother was born. Right. Um, but so if you obviously have been creative for a really long time and mm -hmm. you were creative from before school age or before even preschool. Right. So when you, I mean, this is so long, like so young, but when you entered into school, were you in the Torrance public school system? I was, yeah. Um... Would majority. you say that they like facilitated your love of art or how was it? Not I really. Don't, I don't feel like they did, to be honest. Um, I, I was very self-driven, always oh. have been, to just draw. It, it was what I did to just entertain myself, to distract myself, to keep my busy hands busy. Yeah. And um, I remember going to, to high school and taking my first art class. And I remember my teacher not really understanding why I was drawing all these weird characters. I was really into comic books and cartoons. So yeah. my stuff was leaning that way. And like he would, I would take the assignments he'd give us like on one point, two point perspective, which I do value. That's one great thing I, I took away from his class was, That's the, cool. was learning perspective. But then I would add like my characters into the, the, the house that we were making. I'd start putting things in windows and stuff like that. But he didn't like my characters and he's like, I don't know if this is really your thing. I don't know if you're going to be an artist. Like, and I was like, oh, really? And then I stopped taking art classes after that. And I just only did art for myself. I didn't show anybody. I was just oh my God. really introverted at that time too. So I was just kind of quietly just draw it on my notes and in notebooks and stuff like that. And just kind of didn't share my stuff with anybody. Oh so, my God. But, I... but I did push me to draw harder, like on my own That's time. Good. Yeah. That is uh, that perfectly though <laughs> feeds into what I'm trying to say. So yeah. thank you for that, which is arts education is so important. I mean, thank God you're an incredibly singularly driven person, 
Right. Um, but I would imagine a lot of people that have that art within them might not be as driven and ambitious. So if like one teacher, one like person that you maybe look up to or see as an authority figure yep. um, tells you like, no, that's not for you. I, I can only imagine how many people are like, okay, well, they know they're, they're professional, they're getting paid to do it. So maybe I should stop. And that's heartbreaking. And that's why it's so important to have arts in schools. And also maybe tell your teachers not to tell budding young artists not to do the thing they love, but that's a different right. issue. <laughs> and there's one thing I always tell people, either students or friends or younger kids, like, mm -hmm. there are, is there any jobs in art? Because I, I was convinced that there wasn't. But, I, but you just look around, look at advertising on everything. You're watching yeah. TV, everything on it. There's artists involved in so many aspects. It's like, that's like they push sports so heavy in high mm -hmm. school and all that kind of stuff. Why not give equal like to to the arts? Because there's probably more likelihood you're going to get a job in the arts than you are going to be a pro athlete. Like, so oh. it's it, it it just seems like like it's not even. Yeah, absolutely, and um, it's definitely not even. And it's it's crazy to me how the arts are the thing that is cut from budget first. Yeah. Um, because especially, I mean, especially in California, like. Uh, two currently um there's 2.7 like million jobs in the creative economy of Cal uh, of california so right. it's like leaving schools and going into the workforce there's all the there's literally millions of jobs ready for creative people obviously not all of that is um painting and drawing specifically right but that's still a huge element of it and that's a huge element of the economy in california and that california's economy itself is the fifth like the fifth biggest economy in the world compared right. to countries so yeah. to not be getting your your the kids ready for that type of economy is is crazy to me um right. and and like you said about not knowing like what jobs are out there you've been a lot of things you're a street artist you've been an illustrator for bands and clothing companies you you're a foreign artist you've done art for video games yeah. i was trying to say before you came on i think <laughs> you saw it i was like I also didn't know how to say the names of some of the video games. I'm like, oh, oh Johnny God. Hawks Pro Skater 2X. That's the one I worked on. <laughs> okay, so. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, to, I, was, I was like, in Tony Hawk. And then I was like, wait, do I say the X into the two? I don't know. It was really <laughs> pathetic. You got it. It's fine. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's the cool thing is like art, video games are art. And when you wear a band t-shirt, that's art. And yep. then of course, like I know you're now working on canvases and you're working on a lot of fine art now, which yeah. I'm sure people think of as art traditionally, but a lot of your art has been different types of art. And how, how did you find out about like illustrating for bands and being a, a video game guy? It's, how did it's that funny, happen? it's just like a weird snowball. I, I remember, uh, I used to go see lots of bands. Like uh, my friends cool. are, were in bands, I'd go see, I was in a band, we didn't do anything big, we sucked, but. Oh. Or I sucked, you know, but the rest of the guys were good, but. Oh, I so, wanna find that footage. So I'll, I'll send you a little clip, yeah. but. Cool. So being around those people, like I was always drawing too, like, hey, draw this flyer for the show, draw this, oh, we need some shirts, designed this shirt for us because I was learning how to use Photoshop and Illustrator at the same mm. time. I was like 17 or 18. I got a copy of it and I was like, oh, well, what can I do with this? And it kind of landed into the graffiti stuff I was doing too. Like, oh, if I scan in a Hello My Name is sticker and blow it up big and then yeah. throw like my stuff on it, I could print it out. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to figure out how to use a computer. I think using, learning how to use a computer and do art with it is so detrimental, especially to these times, like right mm. now. Because there's so much you can do. You, you, it's like if you can do digital art and and design and stuff, you're almost immediately gonna be able to get a job, especially if you get really good with the programs and stuff. Yeah. Like that. But it was still using the computer and being in those scenes mm -hmm. and then meeting the guy on the spot. We need a shirt like right now. Like my friends Deviates, they were about to go on Warp tour, and my buddy Charlie oh, cool. was like, "Oh, we need a shirt. We need a shirt." Um, I'm like, hey, take the safety pin out of your ear. So he took the safety pin out of his ear. We scanned it at like 600 DPI and blew it up, put it on the shirt. I already had the, <laughs> the font. I designed their, their lettering. Deviates, open safety pin, boom, done. Same thing with like a butterfly knife or whatever we were doing for their shirts that year. And they were That's off. So cool. Same thing like, like Pennywise needed something one time real quick. And their manager, Dione, called me. He's like, Dude, we need shirt designs. So it was just like knowing those people. And then I got really good at computers from doing that. And I got hired doing streetwear and working in the streetwear industry as an illustrator. And that's where I really got. I think when you're doing these jobs and doing the projects around other people doing it is when you mm -hmm. really start learning. My yeah. art director's there. 
just pushed me heavily into learning graphics. And then from that job, I was able to get a job at Activision. I'm working on oh. Treyarch. I'm working on video games such as Tony Hawk and a bunch of Spider Man, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spider Man was fun. That was a fun project. I, was like, I think I did three of the Spider Man titles. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, I love that too. Like when when you're saying about the 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 safety pin and the butterfly knife and like blowing it up is uh, one of the things that I talk about with create with create California is that um you think about like oh if you're if you're a creative person or if you have arts in the schools it'll make you better at your creative job, but um obviously this specific this specific case is a creative job, but sometimes like that's so out there like doing that is so random and out of the box and so it's like <laughs> that type of thinking and i mean that in the best way possible right, it's right. that type of thinking that like even if you have like a more like corporate job or a job that's not um creative like just being able to come up with this wacky idea of how about we take this and blow this up and they make this happen like right. it's, it's creative um answers to all types of questions yeah. or problems or whatever and um, yeah, being able to think outside the box is so important, which there's lots of do. there's lots of kids out there too like that. I, I've done talks at different schools before and you, you see these kids, they just need to be handed the tools and like be able to be exposed to, oh, that's how I do it. Because they yeah. have all these rad ideas. They just need kind of like, they need somebody to tell them you can do this. You're allowed to sometimes yep. they feel like, oh, I can't do that. But to have those tools presented to them, like here, try Photoshop, try Illustrator. Here's a paintbrush. You can use this paint with it. Like if they get yeah. handed the tools, they're going to be able to figure it out because they already have the mind for it. They just need to yeah. get the tools to figure it out. And I'm assuming you saying with your mom said that you um, started drawing at three. Were, were you, was your mom, did you have like a, a household that was supportive of you being an artist? Yeah, they were real supportive. Um, yeah, my dad started building me canvases to paint on when I was like 18. Like oh. I started doing graffiti when I was 17. And he thought if he built me a wall in the back that I wouldn't go do it on the streets, but it just Didn't made work. it better for him. When I was <laughs> he facilitated you becoming more of a street artist. Yeah. And so from that, he decided, well, let's just build you some canvases too. You know, I asked him like, can you help me? I need, I have a show coming up. I need like an eight foot canvas built to spray paint on and he That's built awesome. it for me and like after that he just started perfecting um my canvases and for years he was the only one who made them but oh wow yeah so but and you're stretching your own canvas was that I, he's they moved on to washington now he's not making them anymore but it's still <laughs> yeah but you said you're stretching your own canvases now right is that how you say it well i stretch them i i, I buy them pre-stretch now like the one behind me because uh -huh. my hands get jacked up. Like he would build a, a panel and I would uh -huh. stretch the canvas around it and then prime it and do that. One time I stretched a 16 foot canvas, 16 by four. Yeah. And I swear I had arthritis in my left hand for at least a month. It oh my God. Bad. You should probably be careful with that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have different interns come in and do it too. I'd be like, okay, you're going to just stretch canvases all day today. So get used to it. And they'd learn how to do it. And my buddy Graham got really good at it. And he, he was doing that for years and, the, here's yeah. the thing that I didn't even know. I mean, obviously it exists, but I never thought about it. Cause like the pathetic drawings that I, I'm, I'm not, I shouldn't say that about myself cause I'm trying to encourage other people to do art, but I really am <laughs> terrible. Um, any type of paint that I've done, I just like, Oh, I just go to Michael's and then I buy canvases there and you forget that like, Oh, artists actually like part of the artistry is literally stretching the canvas around the wood. And that is part of the, the process or like, having somebody on your team that can do that. And like, it's all right. these jobs that I'm like, I just thought you, they magically appeared at Michael's or like, right. I you mean, know. You can, I still would suggest anybody getting that stuff from Michael's that they should buy some gesso and primer that canvas they bought a couple times and sand it and get it all perfect. Cause I don't think a canvas straight off the rack is gonna be ideal for painting on. But that's oh, my, that's yeah. I, have, I, have, I have YouTube videos on that stuff too. If anybody wants to see, I have how to oh, prime a good. panel. Stuff like yes, that. go to Crayola's YouTube videos. That's awesome. I might actually do that. But yeah, yeah it's like things that people can look at. Because like right now too, we're stuck inside, you know. Right. And it's like it's times like these where you really realize, like, I mean, obviously, I already knew art was important. I've been, I've been, you know, in the in film industry since I was for like twenty years almost now, wow. since I was a little kid. Yeah. And so I've always understood the importance of art. But it wasn't until I was like inside, and I also have anxiety. And so, and then, you know, I'm already scared of the world anyways, and then throw a pandemic and I'm like, oh God. 
And then I started writing more and I started um, doing other artistic things, even like doing puzzles and stuff, like little stuff like that. Yeah. Um, where I was like, wow, art is so healthy. And once I started, um, I haven't written in a while. And it wasn't until the pandemic that I started writing again. And that like helped my, this is so cheesy, but like it helped my soul so much. Yeah, and it absolutely. really was like that, that hoop that I needed to get through during this to all of a sudden start to feel better, um, just like mental health wise. And that's yeah. what writing was to me. And yeah, that's why times like this, like uh, arts, education, having arts is so important because it helps mental health. And then also just in normal times when you're in school, having an arts education, in addition to just having it, it makes you, um, kids with arts education are three times more likely to um, get a bachelor's degree and five times more likely to graduate. Right. Um, regardless of if you go into the arts or not. Um, so, oh yeah, that's, so I'll just remind everybody again to sign the pledge. I pinned it on the bottom of the comments. It's createca.org. Um, and that's like a very quick actionable thing you can do in like 15 seconds. So sign the pledge. Um, and that's to actually champion getting arts into the schools, um, which California is mandated to do. Right. It's literally a mandate, um, but schools are just choosing not to. And only 12% of California schools um, actually uh, have uh, the arts that, that, they're, that, that they're mandated to have. So they're like basically breaking the law, not having <laughs> arts. That's how determined they are. Right. Um, so you got your bachelor's degree in studio art at right. uh, Long Beach. Yep, at Long Beach State. Okay, so, cool. What is studio art? Well, it, studio art was how I sidestepped um, finishing my illustration degree because I just wanted to start working. Cool. So I was in the illustration department, and there was a couple different classes I could take, and I could take, I think it was a, a bunch more semesters and get my illustration degree, or go to studio art, take just about the same classes, but mm. be able to graduate a little early. So I did that because I wanted to start working. Cool. And get into the workforce and stuff like that. And that was the same year I met my wife. I met her at, at Long Beach State too, which oh, cool. she's got the business brains behind all of this art stuff. So if awesome. she makes That's it perfect too. So having somebody that can just help you with your business side of things is very important too as an artist. But oh, yeah, but yeah great. Studio, thank you. Yeah, studio art is um, basically understanding how to use all, a bunch of different tools. Um, cool. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I took mostly illustration classes if anybody really is wondering. So that's, that's awesome. I got my style and all stuff like that. I love it. Your style, speaking of your style, I uh, I have this poster from when when you guys said I'm scared. Yeah. This is this is one of Crayola's pieces. <laughs> that's awesome. You have that. Isn't that? And, and you signed it too. Yeah. Yep. So I have your I have your autograph. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I realized I had, I, I was like, oh my God, I need to get it. Um, I, speaking of an artist's brain, and that's what I'm going to blame it on. Little brother just called me and he, speaking of my little brother who was born when I was three and taking away my spotlight. No, I mean, he's, he's like my best friend. Um, but sorry about that. That's um, I need to get this, I need to get this framed because nice. it's, it's perfectly neat still, but it, it's, it's, I'm just asking for it, like the dog to rip it up or something. Um, but yeah, this is, I got this when uh, Crayola works with how I, how we know each other for you out there in the Instagram world. Uh, him and my, my fiance, uh, my fiance worked on a film of his called I'm Scared, which by the way, look it up. It's this really awesome, inventive um, short film based yeah. on your animation. And my fiance co-composed the score with Mark Hoppus, yeah. which is how we all got um, connected with you. Right. And um, it's so cool. And so that's how I got this because I, I can't remember how, but yeah, so it's called yeah. I'm Scared. And um, yeah, it's a short film. H how did that come about? So it's an animated short film. Well, it's a stop motion animated. It's stop motion. And my friend Dan Levy and Pete Levin, um, they approached me and said, let's do a Kickstarter and animate one of your stories. and. I brought them a stack of stories and they're like, that's cool, but that's a lot involved in that story. Let's, let's look through. And then I'm like, well, there is this one I've been working on with my son. I, I, we make up a rhyming couplet at night. Like, I'm scared of the creature who climbs up the stairs. I'm scared of gelatinous goop and eclairs. Like, what, he'll, I'll start one, he'll finish it with something goofy. That's awesome. And it just starts with, I'm scared for everything. And, and by That's like my life. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, it's basically a bad brother, a big brother's 
bad advice to his little brother about everything he should be scared of. But at the end, um, nobody's scared of anything. So it's, I love it was that. to help my kid go to bed at night. And these guys did an amazing job. Pete Levin is an amazing director. Um, they, they both come from the robot chicken world and he's done stuff with Foo Fighters and like all kinds of great stuff. So uh, yeah, they did a great job on it and I'm really proud of what was able to come from it. So I was, I art directed that. I didn't do the animating part. I'm not good enough to do But that. it was based on your but My your story. Art. Yeah, my artwork, in your, my story. Yeah, yeah. And then a team of amazing people put it all together. So it was, it was a fun process. It yeah. was so cool. I love too when art. Um, I worked on a movie once that was that was because the the, the writer producer uh, would tell his son stories at night. So yeah. they came up with this like wacky idea, and then he was like, "I should make that into a movie." And so I love when like art imitates life, but like yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, and your kids are so cute. I remember at the premiere <laughs> for it, they I was just like, are "These these are some these are like literally some of the cutest children I've ever seen in my life." Oh, thank you. They're yeah. monsters. They're really yeah. Monsters. Don't, don't, don't let them fool you. And the older <laughs> one just turned 13 two days ago. Wow. I'm for it. But really? It's, yeah. I mean, no, they're, they're, they're sweet. That was a long so. time ago. No, of course, they're yeah. wonderful. But like, I have yeah. a puppy, so I totally get it 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I know the puppy is like 3% of what it'll be like to have like a child, but it's right. a good practice. And yeah, I love her, but practice. sometimes I'm like, yeah, right. stop chewing on that shoe, which is what she's doing right now. Um, I just realized I didn't do this on purpose, but I'm holding a Disney mug and I read that you love Disney animation or you did yeah. when you were great. This is from Sword in the Stone. You've the seen Sword, Sword in the Stone, Stone, right? Yeah. This is an underrated classic in my it opinion. It's um, but that's true, right? Like you grew up loving Narnia and, and, and Disney animation and, and that oh, stuff. And it's like anything that had a portal into another world, like Alice in Wonderland goes down the rabbit hole, you know? Anything like Narnia, you said, Lucy goes into the wardrobe. It, yep. it's anything that transports you to another world, I'm 100% in. That's yep. how I came up with the whole the world I paint. It's called The Outside. And so it's uh, basically us being transported to that other world. And that's where these that. things that don't make sense really can make sense is in that world. So I love anything, that. Anything, all those old moves. I even liked, you know, like the Phantom Tool booth that Hanna Barbera put out back in the day. Like, it, it, I haven't one seen of that. My, favorites chuck jones did the animation it's really good oh i should watch that yeah watch it it's good oh that's cool i love i love it your art feels like you've fallen down a rabbit hole and yeah. gone into another world or maybe the real world and we're like the world that's in the going fake along. World. that's right that's the real world this is the fake one i like yeah i like your world i like my i like my frog who's looking at a playing card <laughs> with a cool tattoo on his on his wrist. Yeah, um, and he's coming out of a, of a keyhole. So that keyhole is a, is a portal to the other Oh, world. yeah. I paint them a lot in my paintings, and you'll even see, like, different worlds through the keyholes and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I love that. That's so cool that you're looking out to the real world. Right. Um, yeah, I grew up, like, loving loving animation and those were the first movies that those were the first movies I loved was animation um I remember like Sunday nights on ABC they'd always play a Disney movie yep. and whenever it was a uh, live action I'd be like really disappointed and <laughs> I would only like, want to which mountain I don't want to watch that exactly on Fantasia and now like that's what I do like I'm like the person in the live action that like five-year-old me would be like I don't want this give me the animation <laughs> but the only time I ever tried to do um art um, however you would like you know drawing or any manifestation of that was when I was a little kid and I remember being in Disney World when I was like seven and finally being inspired to like draw and I um I bought a little art kit to learn how to what that taught you how to draw Mickey yeah. so to this and I actually worked diligently on the on it for like you know for a small child yeah. and so to this day the only thing that I'm actually like somewhat good at drawing is just a black and white version of Mickey's head so that's yeah. something <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But, and then you can just change the ears and you got a whole other character. Uh, but, see, I wouldn't have yeah. even thought of it. And that's what I get for talking to an artist. <laughs> I mean, there were so many characters based on that. The pie eye, they call it. Just the circle with the cut out in the eye. There were so many, like, like Felix before, and, you know, Bimbo from Betty Boop. And, like, all so many characters that look Mickey. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was... That's what I was just thinking. You just gave him, like, the longer... Yeah, I always draw Oswald. I have a whole stack of Oswald stuff. On really? Right here, Oswald. Oh my God, rabbit. you do! I love him, and I love the story about how he came before Mickey, and then 
yeah. they had to kind of jump ship and they started Mickey Mouse. So he's like his yes. Mickey's, um, older stepbrother. I was just, before you even went into that and you just said Oswald, I was like, I was about to say, oh, I yeah. love being in a conversation with someone who actually knows who Oswald was. And then lo and yeah. behold, you have a collection and know the whole story. Yeah, I, I even spray paint on walls. Like Long Beach probably painted the most. I have a bunch of Oswalds painted around Long Beach. Um, I just love that story. I love Ub, Ub Iwerks. He, he drew Mickey and he drew um, Oswald the Lucky. Yeah. Rabbit. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all in. I, I got my coffee mugs in the morning, have Oswald on it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, good. Then I feel like, like for having my sword in this, like all my yeah. mugs are Disney. I, I like starting my day with something um, fantastical and yeah. lovely, which obviously yeah. you do too. I yeah. mean, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, geez, I got you've been talking to me for so long, and I really appreciate it. Is is I, I guess I just the last thing I want to ask you, um, just because you know the subject is create California and is education in schools. Was there any moment in your um, in your education, whether it was in high school or at, at Long Beach State, where there was a teacher or a class or something that like um inspired I mean obviously you were already inspired you already knew you wanted to be an artist but was there any like moment or anything you can think of where like your education either was you were like oh god well I guess you did say your teacher said don't be an artist and you were like screw you I'm doing my thing but I'll, I did I'll have answer a, rather than going on and on I did have a couple teachers but one in particular named Ben Nago at El Camino when I was at junior college and I was going in to get my pre-veterinary medicine like just fundamentals Done so I could go off and try to get into UC Davis or something. I thought I was gonna be a vet. And I took you grew up around trip. animals, right? You yeah. like rabbits and that's cool. And dogs and dogs and cats. Oh, and cool. so that first semester I took an art class. I'm like, I really want to take an art class. So I did. And he's like, This is your major, right? I'm like, No. He's like, Well, why not? You're doing so well. It's like that's silly. You know, I'd love to have you in my advanced class next semester, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? You think this can happen? And then I, that same year, I got a job making Pogs, designing Pogs, which was a kid's game. And, yeah. and I, for a few weeks, I stayed on my buddy, uh, Mark Vidal's floor, like couch in the South San Diego. Uh -huh. And he was working at Ted Williams Card Company. And I would draw the images. He would take it in, scan and do all the layouts. And I had a set of Pogs out and the nice paycheck for my first art job. And I was like, I think I could do this. And so I talked to my parents. I'm like, I really think I want to switch majors and try to decide. He's like, well, all right, let's give it a shot and did it and never looked back. I've been working, working as an artist and obviously had side jobs as a waiter and stuff for many years at the same time. Totally. Of course. Yeah. But, just, but I've been just absorbed in art my whole life. And ever since that, it was like supercharged and I haven't looked back. Oh so. God. Well, I'm so glad that happened. Cause if you weren't, I mean, look at all this cool art you brought into the world. I couldn't <laughs> even imagine not having this. That's why it's so important yeah. to encourage artists and to have art in schools because how boring would our world be without it how boring would like i'm so glad this frog is here that i get to look through the keyhole at like <laughs> i'm so glad that happened <laughs> yeah. i pinch myself every day and like you were saying like you need to distract yourself if you're quarantined all up. like when i come in here and work and i'm on a canvas i'm in that world i feel like i'm I, it, it's like I, little stories are spinning around in my head. I don't know if I'm crazy or anything, but I'm yeah. just painting. And next thing you know, I'm in, I've been in there from nine and it's six o'clock and it's dinner time. And I don't even know where the time has gone. I love it. It's, it's my absolute favorite thing to do, to work, to escape, to communicate with other people. It's been the number one thing. And I, I, I don't, I, I can't stop. Like, We're going to retire. I'm, like, I'm never going to retire. Never. I love that. Spitting out painting birds or something someplace. If anyway. <laughs> totally. Because like when you do your art, you're you're helping yourself and you're escaping and inhabiting this world. But then beyond that, like art is meant to be shared. And so like it's it's doing all of this for you. But then it goes out into the world and like right. like right oh, there's a, the perfect timing. This guy commented. He said, "Pass officially." Said Crayola changed my life in art. The way my phone's a little bit broken, so I can't read the whole thing. But the way to something to be self secure to be crazy in my paintings. Can you read the whole thing? My phone's broken. That's just... um, oh, mine's not even. I think you have to, but pretty much he said life change your life. Your sorry that oh, you change to be self secure to be crazy in my paintings. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. See, that's there you go, really right cool. there. Thanks, past official. That's very good timing, <laughs> and what we were just talking about, and how important art is. Um, awesome. I absolutely love that. Uh, well, thank you, Crayola, for spending so much time chatting with me. I really appreciate it. You are such 
a wonderful example of why arts education and why art is so important in this world. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. And I guess go sign that pledge down there. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, go, go into, go fall down one of your rabbit holes. <laughs> okay. And um, create more beauty. It and tell James uh, hi for me too. I will. I will. Tell your family I say hi. All right. Nice okay. seeing you. You too, Carilla. Right, bye. bye.